Well, his mic is on this side, so we're good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fix your jacket a little bit. So the wire doesn't show. There we go. Okay. Yay. Okay. Okay. Report so of voice. Been, I know. Okay. So it's been. Are we looking at you almost, or the camera? Yeah. Just at me. Oh. Okay. So it's been a week almost, right, since the episodes came out. Have you guys gotten any good feedback or what are people saying about it? Uh, we've got mostly positive feedback. A lot of people interested in whether I've had the baby or not. <laughs> so lots of like questions on your DMs or yeah. just people like that know you around Houston. Yeah, or like, you know, questions about IVF. You know, a lot of women struggle through that and they want to know, you know, what, how many cycles I did, how I liked my doctor, a lot of questions like that. And My questions are mostly about the kids, like in the smiling. Like everyone's <laughs> like, "Oh, I cried with Judy, and I, I laughed with you guys." You know, so it's a lot of like emotions. Like I feel like you have gone through a roller coaster with mm -hmm. the first three episodes. Yeah. And the kids are back in school, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. have they been kind of swarmed by their friends or classmates that are like, "I've seen you on." This <laughs> When, well, a, when a kid tells me they watch it, I'm like, you're too young to watch it. <laughs> Roosevelt will come home and be like, hey, Dad, my friend's sister loves House of Ho. But Yeah. yeah. Um, I've had parents like, oh, you know, they'd seen me pregnant at school. And then they were like, oh, just wanted to catch up and see what's going on. Yeah. Or they'll ask about um, the kids and, like, mm -hmm. whether they want to be on the show more and stuff like that. Yeah, the kids enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas it tells his teachers like where his parents are movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost surreal to think, I mean, because I remember when you guys were like filming, I mean, obviously you met like before season one and then, you know, filming through season two and now it's happening here and it's airing the same time as House of Dragon, like we were just talking about, which mm -hmm. is like one of the highest, you know, most popular shows of all mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So how does it feel to be on that, you know, sharing that same platform? Um, what I, show that big? I think it's a huge advantage to be with an awesome company like HBO Max and you know there's so many new subscribers coming on there's I think supposedly a hundred million now in House of the Dragon brought in millions and hopefully people get confused <laughs> and instead of putting House of the Dragon put House of Hell. <laughs> uh, so you want to see real people you want to see dragons yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what, but, but also kind of, you know, on the flip side of that, this is, you know, you're still bringing Houston, representing Houston, the city of Houston, a city that I think gets overlooked a lot. Mm -hmm. And then it also brings, you know, to the mainstream media, all the struggles of, um, an Asian family, a Vietnamese American family. So the significance of that is huge, you know? Mm -hmm. So what is it like, well, I guess, when you think about that and what's something that, when you're filming or when you're going through the season that you try to remember and then kind of, you know, remember to like speak to the audience about? Um, I think for us, when we film at certain Houston locations, it's definitely landmarks, right? And I just love that people get to know Houston because like you said, it is an overlooked city. Um, you know, everybody thinks of New York and LA, but we have a lot to offer here and I hope people appreciate that. Nobody thinks of New York and LA. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Houston is our hometown. We love it. It's diverse. It's, you know, the food capital of the world. You can get any type of food from any country, the best food, and we're very proud. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Houston has the friendliest people, mm -hmm. just in general, like oh, on yeah. the street or wherever you go. People just, you know, embrace you and are very easy to approach. Yeah, and I think the second part of the question is, you know, I think we're always filming with our culture and our background in our head, you know, and just showcasing like a traditional engagement and for mm -hmm. the Vietnamese culture, uh, traditional alias, traditional food, you know, stuff that we do every day in our everyday life. And um, I think we show representation for our culture. This is not how every family does it, mm -hmm. but this is kind of how our family does it. Mm -hmm. And I do like it because it's almost so subtle in a way, like it, it becomes so nor uh, such a normal part of your life. Mm -hmm. And I think other people who aren't familiar with the culture are like so fascinated by it. Right. They're like, what are these outfits you're wearing? <sighs> what is this restaurant, like the grocery store that you were in with yes. your cousins? Yes. It was such a subtle kind of reference of like, oh, we're here shopping at this Asian market. Yeah. Which may be something that like Asian families do every weekend, but for mm -hmm. a lot of people they're like, Whoa, what is that? <laughs> is, there, is that a life crowd? I know. <laughs> They're like, that's not Central Market. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> and was that something that you guys, um, did you have a say in sort of like the businesses that 
HBO filmed mm -hmm. it, or mm -hmm. were there like suggestions that you made to them? No, I, one hundred percent. I think like you know, all these places are family frequents. Often, you know, we've made memories there, and so when we go there, I get a lot of DMs of, "Oh, I love that restaurant." You know, my husband proposed to me there. You know, so it brings back people's memories, and it's so nostalgic to see Houston in the different places. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something? Oh, I, I was just going to say there is a lot of back and forth between us and the producers. You know, we give them a list of places that we shop at, that we eat, that we frequent, and then they go scouting and then they get back to us about what works on film. Yeah, these producers before filming here, they had never been to Houston, so mm -hmm. they're coming in here blind. We're telling them what's cool, you know, where we'd like to film, and we love supporting the local entrepreneurs. Yes. What kind of um, pushback? If, if any, did you give them in terms of like the stereotypes they had in their mind and <laughs> what you actually wanted them, like, like the reality that you actually wanted to portray? I feel like they leave it up to us. You know, they kind of work with us, but when the camera's on, we just react naturally to whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they don't tell us how to act or anything like that. And it comes across on film, I feel, as authentic. I think one thing I did learn was, you know, the production budgets right here and House of Ho <laughs> Family's Taste is up here. <laughs> so we try to shoot for, you know, the best of the best, but we always have to fit within the parameters. Mm -hmm. Washington yeah. doesn't do well parameters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why everyone needs to watch season two <laughs> on HBO Max. He doesn't like those words. Uh, Boundaries, parameters, rules. Like, <laughs> me out right now. He's cringing as we speak. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, so, I mean, this is also so rare in a way because you don't really see one an all Asian cast in a lot of mainstream media, but on top of that, you're also being very vulnerable and you're airing your dirty laundry, mm -hmm. um, which in Asian culture, it's just not normal. Mm -mm. You just like say face, you don't say anything, <sighs> right. right? So what's, I guess, kind of the hardest part um, about doing that and then now, um, I'm assuming you've watched the, the three episodes. Right yes. Now. I think the hardest part about doing that is not doing it, but the fan reaction or audience reaction afterwards is <laughs> not. I mean, they don't read the fan reaction, but I love reading it. <laughs> it's so hard for me the not to like, yeah, it's hard for me not to read. This guy's on Reddit. I'm like, <laughs> dude. I'm like, dang. <laughs> you know, like, well, 40 people, if 40 people out of 5 million people that watch our show aren't happy that's okay with me yeah you know because mm -hmm. you yeah, know if, if we're not authentic and real then you know it's not reality and it's not helping anybody I think we realize what we signed up for and it's actually I feel kind of freeing kind of putting everything out there but it is hard sometimes to read like negative things or people being very judgmental um, but for me, you know, I'm in it with my family and we're being honest. And I feel like 20 years from now, if my kids see it, I'd be very proud of anything that we've showed. So it's fine with me. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, the best thing that has happened is it's forced us each to <laughs> confront our own problems mm -hmm. and help each other. And it shows that our family is as resilient as ever, just mm -hmm. like Houston, Texas. <laughs> we all pull for each other and I'm very proud of the show. And I feel the things that we share is universal. Like everyone goes through similar struggles, you know, IVF, marriage problems, kids, all of that, you know? Divorce, yes. death. Yes, regardless of culture. Right. Yeah. Do you feel like a lot of the feedback or the criticism is coming from people that are of like Asian descent or kind of all over? It's mostly Asian descent. <laughs> um, Depends on where you read, I think. I mean, I look at the comments, I look at the names and they've got... <laughs> You know, very Asian-ish I keep telling him that they're tougher. I well, keep telling him to stop doing this. Well, the thing is, they don't believe that we represent, you know, the Asian culture. And but, we don't claim to represent all of them, right? right. Our experience right. is unique to us. Right. right. And we are Vietnamese Americans, and this is how we live. And I think people are just expecting us to cover every, you know, aspect. aspect. And that's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, one thing that kind of stood out to me... Um, in the first three episodes is they, they talk a lot about Dr. Neat's kids, obviously. I mean, that, and I know it's so hard to talk mm -hmm. about, but, like, coming from us, like, from the freeze and, like, having that kind of separate with that, I mean, I wasn't sure if it was going to be touched on, but it was talked about a lot. And is that something that we're going to kind of be seeing a lot more of? Um, you know, that was very hard for Nate to share. 
And at first we didn't want to share it, but the producers like, you know, this is a reality show and that is your reality. So we need to at least, um, you know, let, every, let everybody know what happened. We don't need to go into detail. We don't need to, you know, exploit it in any way and just be very, very careful about how we address it. And I feel like, you know, the producers did, you know, a very thoughtful way of sharing those that news. And beyond that, um, I think it sh you can see it in Nate here and there, but do we talk about it in detail? No, yeah. that's just something too close for Nate to share publicly. Mm. Um, yeah, and I, I, I think the re references are so subtle, like mm -hmm. the you know the initials on like the chain that yeah. he gave him and things like that. I was I was impressed with that too. Mm -hmm. um, and then for you know the both of you. I think the hardest thing, I don't know if like, what, what's the hardest thing for you to watch back? I mean, it's so much focused on like the marriage struggles, right? And mm -hmm. issues with kids, like, and I think so many people relate to that. But do people at like school, you know, or like what's, I guess, what is the perception, I guess? Do you feel like anything's different after anything's aired? Or are you just kind of like, you were mentally prepared to deal with all that? I think season two were more mentally prepared than season one. You know, Washington and I season one were struggling way harder than we are season two. And so I feel like this season, you know, we still struggle with our marriage life every day, you know, especially with the kids involved. Um, but I feel like you get to see kind of our playful sides, you know, and, you know, as hard as our marriage is, like you see us work through it, you see us make decisions as a family, um, and you see, I think, us both supporting each other. Well, you have to understand, you know, this show is about entertainment, and, you know, we film 90 days for, you know, and it's 90 days, and, you know, unfortunately, every time the 90 days comes, there's a lot of pressure on our marriage, and things get tough. But I'm very proud of us. Season two, you know, I start seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, going through my sobriety and recovery has been, you know, probably a lot tougher to watch for me. Um, but hopefully I can inspire other people who have problems to be able to communicate with their spouse, you know. And <laughs> it's, it was easy for me to, you know, give up the thing that, I thought I loved most for the thing I needed most. He's been saying a lot that this week. That's good. <laughs> good one. He's like, I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And I did love the kid thing. I laughed. That's the first thing I said when I saw him. <laughs> I love the kid smile photo. That was so funny. <sighs> so relatable. Um, and I also, I mean, there's a few new cast members. I mean, which, which you guys are very close with, it looks like, right? I yeah. Mean, and um, yeah. Bella. what has it been like for them, I guess? Because they're... Uh, did they move back here, like, kind of for filming? For, well, Belle and Kim, uh, they were born and raised here, and then they moved to California for college. And then uh, they moved back here partly for applying to med school here in Houston and just to be closer to the family and just coincided with filming. They, I mean, they couldn't believe how much work it takes to make <laughs> one season of a reality show. I mean, just like us, you know, it looks easy when you're watching others, but... Of course, it's just like any other job. Yeah, and they, and they gave a different perspective. You know, like Judy and I are well into our you know later years in life, and they're just starting. You yeah, know, and single and in Houston, and you know they didn't go through kind of the struggles with our parents coming over. Like their parents are more Americanized in a way, because mm -hmm. um, they've been here longer. You know, so it's it's a different struggle for them, and it's a different perspective on the whole family. Mm -hmm. They have their whole life ahead of themselves. I just hope they learn from my mistakes and don't repeat them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they seem like really good girls, so. Anytime they're going to do I'm like, don't do that. This is what happened to me when I did that. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see, like, in the fashion side of it is completely different. You know, like, they're 21 and 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. their makeup is different. Their clothes is different. Stuff that I wish I could pull off, you know, at that age. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Gen Z is like dressed yes. like tops. Yes. Yes. Minimalist. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's been fun to see, like, new characters on the show. Yeah, and uh, Nate's sisters are on there as well, yeah. mm -hmm. so that's a different perspective as well. Yeah. They're a very close family, but very different from us. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's, you know, probably four to five really important storylines that happen in the show that I think are groundbreaking, especially for the Asian culture. We don't see a lot of truth um, in the mainstream, and so we're going to see it this season. Mm-hmm. Um, 
next set of episodes comes out tomorrow. Correct. Yeah. Tomorrow. Four episodes tomorrow, right? Yep. Four three. Episodes. Oh, okay. No, it's four, and then three. Are you sure? Three, four, three. <laughs> so there's three raw of like. Yes. Yeah. Are you three, sure? Three, four, three. So we get to see that one scene where you throw that. I don't throw anything. Oh, what? Uh -oh. You're talking about the the like, salmon. The what? what? The salmon drama. Anything. I didn't I'm throw anything. <laughs> In one word, how would you describe the next set of episodes? I'm gonna start with you, Judy. Um, shocking. Deep. Oh. Drama. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> shocking deep <to> drama. <laughs> Put them all together. Yeah. What if you were like House of Ho? <laughs> Um, okay. Anything else you guys want to add or? Just want to say thank you to, you know, our city, Houston, for letting us film here mm -hmm. and being, you know, so hospitable and embracing our journey. And supportive. We've been stopped, you know, because I feel like local people watch it more because Houston, you know, it's mm -hmm. hard seeing a Houston family on TV and it's so rare. And we've been stopped at the grocery stores and restaurants, you know, people just come up and have just given us so much love um, and support and we just really appreciate all yeah. that. Yeah. I think people don't come up to me because they know I don't hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get lots of hugs. Oh, that's so funny. So do people come up and just start talking about stuff in the show and they're like, Julia, no, you don't hug. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> or they're like at the nail salon, they're like, I don't want to bother you. I'm like, it's okay, I'm it's at the nail salon. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. And then you guys have been doing a lot of community stuff too, right? I mean, do you feel like this in a way has made you closer to the community? Like, you know, appearances and mm -hmm. getting invited to like host galas and... Yeah, I love being invited by the Asian American Bar Association in Houston along with you. Um, you know, it goes back to my roots as a lawyer and getting to know all these young lawyers is pretty amazing. And actually Wash and I are honorary members for the Kids Meals Houston. Yeah, so um, you know, worked really close with Cynthia, and she watched our show and had reached out. You know, and we've always been involved in like volunteer ways, but not an honorary board member. You know, we're on there with like the CEO of Kroger and ATV. Like, it's a lot of big people names, and mm -hmm. and you know, and we just feel like just um, so blessed to have kind of maybe a hand in helping out. You know, giving back to Houston. Yeah, we're just getting started. <laughs> Lots more. What Lots else, more. What else can you preview? It seems tiring, but, you know, I think we're just getting started. You yeah. Know, the city, it feels like after, you know, the first three episodes aired last week that I think we have more fans. You, you mean online? I mean, <laughs> online, around the city. People are, I guess, maybe it's my character, but people are, are a lot more I think there's more noise, me. for sure, this second season than it was first. I think it was a lot yeah. more quiet first season. Second season, I feel like there's a lot more noise. I mean, we're getting our own billboard in Times Square. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And billboards in LA, mm -hmm. in Hollywood, Sunset, you know. Everywhere but off 45 here. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, this is where it is. Yeah. I'm asking HBO Marketing, if we pay for it ourselves, can I have a billboard in my own city? Anybody can do it if you pay for yourself. Yeah. I'm going to ask them today. That's surreal to think about, right? When you and you're going to New York this weekend, obviously, right? Yes. Yeah, we're gonna go. So you're gonna look up and be like, oh, Yeah, I think it's. Whoa. I'm most excited to see the kids. You know, to see the kids see us on there. Yeah. I think you know to think about my dad. You know, he came over here in 1975, like on a boat, literally on yeah. a boat. And for now, this weekend we're going to New York, and his face is gonna be on Times Square. Is epic. Well, he yeah. came with. My, our, our mom too so her face would be up <laughs> yes <laughs> but like that's like true rags to riches yes yeah like, yes working, like i didn't know some of the stuff i guess maybe you'd talk about it but i forgot that she worked at a gas station yes i just can't wait to see my parents face when they see themselves on times square like yeah th they're never ever going to be able to say we owe them anything <laughs> i'm gonna be like look and you that's not like the best example of like Yes. Like, you know, it's I, like the American dream fully realized, right? Yeah. That's the best gift we could ever give our parents. Yeah. A legacy. Mm -hmm. So we're making this whole weekend about them and for the kids and yeah. all the activities are centered around their happiness. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. All right. Yeah, Thank you. This isn't the only series being shot in Houston right now. Yeah. No. I heard about what the Netflix about show. The, the, the Houston kind of a what show? 
Oh, Mo, right? Mo? Yeah. 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 It's on, I don't know what Netflix. Top, top Chef. Netflix, Netflix. Netflix. I like top, top Chef. chef. Yeah. yeah. I so I, I remember know? during filming, the PAs would tell us and the producers who had to get permitting and stuff, they're like, oh, you know, Houston is so busy right now. Mm-hmm. All these other shows are filming. And we knew Top Chef at the time, but we didn't know about the show Mo. But later on, I realized, oh, that's what they were talking about. Yeah. But yeah, Houston, Austin. There's a couple other ones, I think. Yeah, yeah. Texas is really making it smart. Did we pave the way for that? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Take the credit. Take the credit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of cool, right? I mean, you guys are obviously born and raised here. You've mm-hmm. lived like in different parts, but yeah. um, to see Houston now, does it kind of level the playing field when it when we think people always say New York, L.A., Chicago, mm-hmm. but Houston's the fourth largest city. Yes, you know, it has it's the most diverse. It has all the jobs, money, whatever. Restaurants. You but it's like it's not looked at as an equal playing field. No. It's looked at as the energy capital of the world, and it is, but it's the human energy that I always say. <laughs> this city has more energy than any other city. We've got Megan the Stallion coming out of here. You Beyonce. Know, Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Beyonce. I, I'm going to give all the credit to Beyonce yeah, well, <laughs> for putting Houston on the map. Our, our very good friend, Beyonce. Um, She's your friend? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe by season yeah. three. Yeah. <laughs> I love Megan the Stallion, and you know you got Travis Scott. I mean, there's a lot of yeah, a lot of flavor in this city. Mm-hmm. Oh, there they is. They got Washington Ho. Yeah. I'm friends with him. Oh yeah. Um, I got him on oh, speed dial. Look at him. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see these? And the code to his house. 